Welcome back to DIY PhD. I'm John Maddox yet again, and this week I'm going to be installing an Emporia View Energy Monitor. Um, what this is going to do is just kind of tell me how much power this sub panel out at this barn is actually going to be using. This is a farm that I'm on right now, and the barn power is separate is not is tied into the same meter as the house power. And because this is technically a business, they wanted to figure out how much power is being used by the barn and then they could actually deduct that off their electrical bill and write that off on their taxes. So this is going to actually monitor how much power is being used by the sub panel and then give them that number so they can actually write that amount off. I know nothing about this at all. I haven't even opened it yet. So we're starting fresh. We're starting scratch on how to install it. I have installed one of the Sense monitors before which has supposedly AI learning and reads the frequencies and would tell you actually how much of each device is being used and I found it very clunky. Um, I think in the one year that I ran it, it showed me like I had like 10 different furnaces on there because it couldn't actually figure out what was what. Some things it figured out right away like an electric car or the hot tub or this or that it figured out right away but it wasn't as good as I thought it was for $300. This thing was 60 bucks. It's fairly affordable and all we're trying to do is figure out exactly how much power is being used out here and that's it. We don't want to know what device is using how much power. I don't need to get that nitty gritty. They do actually have a really cool version of this that gives you like I think 8 or 16 additional leads that you can plug into separate breakers so you can tell exactly how much power each breaker is using, but I didn't even need to go that far. This just has the two standard leads for the two main lugs that come into the sub panel, and then I can read exactly how much power this entire barn is using, because that's all we need to do. So, again, I have not even opened this yet. So, inside you have your main device. It says to get started, scan this which I'm sure will take you right to the app. So I'm going to go ahead and install that. So once installed, it's going to ask you to actually like go through the setup process. So it says, warning, the view requires installation sensors inside the home's electrical panel, exhibit A, and working around dangerous voltage that could lead to injury or death. Don't do this unless you know what you're doing. This is unrestricted 100 amp power, I believe, at this panel. Yeah, 100 amp power and 100 amps will kill you very quickly. Um, a standard circuit, you'll get shocked, you'll feel it, it'll tingle, it'll hurt a little bit. 100 amps, you're dead. So know what you're doing. Luckily, we don't actually have to unhook or unscrew any actual power lines. We're just clamping leads on. But there are specific contact points in here that, that can seriously hurt you, especially if you're standing in any kind of wet ground, which I'm on concrete. It's starting to warm up outside, snow's melting, and my shoes are probably wet right now. So don't do this unless you know what you're doing. So I'm going to go ahead and hit next and it says where safety stuff it needs to operate between negative 40 degrees and up to 122 degrees. Um, all the safety requirements it says gloves, eye protection, alternate light source. I have the sun right here and a Phillips and flat blade screwdriver. So then it gives you a break out of everything that's in here. and all the additional ports, which I do not have. So, turn off the main breaker. Service mains are always live. Trying to do a knockout for the Wi-Fi antenna. That's gonna be difficult with this because it's surrounded by plywood. Then the leads are just gonna go over the main service lines coming in and then things are going to get plugged into it okay so that was a general run through i'm going to go ahead and take this off so now that that's off this should just pop right out just like so and i set it off this because i don't need it anymore so we have our service lines coming in, we have our breakers down here, we have our main breaker up here, and I'm sure I need to tie into one of these to get power. So, open this up, 
We have our main unit here. This is going to send the signal to the Wi-Fi. And then we have our clamps. There's one clamp. There's another clamp. And then this is the wiring harness that ties into our breaker, I'm sure, to get power. We have, just looking through the instructions here. These down each side are going to be the ones that would tie into your breaker up to 16, which I don't have any of those. You have your A, B, and C. These are your main loads off of the service ones up here. And then that is your Wi-Fi antenna. instructions. There's this box here, which I'm sure is the Wi-Fi antenna and some wire nuts. So there's the Wi-Fi antenna. Two pigtails for wiring. Oh, plugs for all the other ports that I'm not using, and two wire nuts. Okay, so it doesn't exactly tell me <laughs> what those wires go to. I'm going to kill the main, which is all the stuff below these main service wires is not going to be dead, um, which gives me an opportunity to actually run these. So, I also don't have a double 20 here. So, it's asking for red and black on this need to go to both sides to where it's hitting both legs. So your main service that comes into a house, single pole, not three phase, is going to be um, 120 volts and 120 volts. So you need to hit two breakers right next to each other because those oscillate between each pole. So this very bottom breaker, say, is going to be on the right side, which is going to be your right service leg getting 120. And then the one right above it jumps to the other side, which is going to give me the other 120. So the red and black wire on the harness is there to actually read both sides of them coming in and getting power from both sides. And then the white and blue are my neutrals, which are just going to tie her into the uh, neutral service bar on the side. But because I don't have an empty breaker, it is going to ask for me to jump straight from the breaker and then pull the load off of that. So I'm going to take this out. Once it's unhooked from the panel, granted the panel doesn't have power right now because I shut the main off, but just extra safety, I'm going to pull the breaker out. That way I can actually work with this. So you have your breaker, you have that pigtail they gave you, you have one, either the red or the black, and then you have the wire that originally went to that breaker. You're going to take all of that and just tie it all together. In place. And then work on the next one after that. The next is going to be this. I'm going to undo the little zip tie and clamp it. And it's important that you hook this up the right way. On the back of these, there is, on the bottom I should say, there's a K to L. So, and that's the way you want it to flow. So, you want the clamp to flow open in that same direction. So, I'm going to take this and I'm going to clamp it like so. And that's going in the correct direction. And this is why you gotta be really careful because this is you're you're dealing with untapped power. Like the only place this has a breaker is at the transformer at the pole. This is your live line coming into the house. So just be extra cautious, extra aware, don't have any distractions. Again, make sure that's facing the right way. And I'm actually tapping this in. My main breaker is still off. And I'm tapping it in way above any of the open metal. That way I can make sure it's like clear. And then I'm going to lay it down. So now those are all done. I'm actually going to separate it and bring it down each side. 
because I can. And you're just going to find a place for this to sit at the bottom here. Now I need to do a knockout here to actually get my Wi-Fi thing out. So I'm going to try to go off the bottom here. And I actually got that up pretty easily, which I'm happy about. I'm just going to take a knockout out. There's all these like holes that have these pre kind of, they're just spot loaded on one side and they have all these little knockout tabs. And you just take one of these and you kind of take a screwdriver and bump it and it'll bend it out and then you'll have a little like welded spot and you just fold it back and forth until it comes out. So I am going to go ahead and throw the panel back on and then hit those two breakers and that should power up the device and then I should be ready to connect it to my network. Whenever putting these back on, I like to open the cover because it gives me an idea of how to line everything up inside. I can get my breakers lined up and that's going to line up my breaker box. So once that's in, I'm just kind of start these screws by hand. So I'm going to go next. Then it asks if I have solar. And I'm going to say no I don't because I do not have solar. And it asks me to make sure my Bluetooth is on. And then stand within five feet of the thing. And I am. And I found the device, so getting, retrieving, scanning available networks. It's going to find the network that's on the, that's set up for the house. So it does need to be on 2.4G. And there's my network. And then it's going to ask for my password. I'm going to hit next. And it's going to connecting to your Wi-Fi network. Connecting to Emporia Net Cloud. So it's doing initial setup right now, making sure I wired everything correctly. Name of view. I guess you can install multiple ones of these. So I'm going to go ahead and name this the barn. And it has to. Updating firmware. I just heard a beep. It says I will not see real time data during that time. So it's doing an update, we'll take one or two minutes. And it looks like this will actually try and find your AC, your furnace, your oven, and stuff as well. And it has like a real time chart with how much money you're spending. Gives you your kilowatts, my savings, shows you options for saving. So, um, like I said, I didn't know anything about this when I first installed. Uh, this kind of looks similar to the Sense app that I used to have. Um, it looks like it actually does do some monitoring of items, which is kind of cool because it sounds like it has some of the same technology that that $300 sense unit had for 60 bucks. So, and the one thing I really like about this is those 16 extra ports, I can hook up to 16 individual circuits inside the box and monitor those, which will give me way more accurate data than what the sense learning does, I believe. Um... So I'm going to check it out and I'll review it after a month, but installation was super simple. I mean, all it was was a screwdriver and then, I mean, that was about it. A screwdriver and a drill for me to mount my Wi-Fi thing, but uh, super simple. And now I'll be able to monitor and deduct the power usage of the barn and save her some money. All right. Uh, this is John Maddox again with DIY BHG. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell. Uh, I'm going to try and do these videos once every two weeks, so two videos a month right now. I will be gearing up. Uh, I am going to try and show off my really cool Wi-Fi setup that I did for this barn, um, as well as anything else I get into. So, uh, again, a short little video installing the Emporia uh, View Energy Monitor. So, uh, yeah, uh, I'll let you know in a month what I think of the app and everything, and we'll go from there. Thanks again.